Ladies and gentlemen, non-binary, gender fluid, and everybody else in between, welcome to Box Office Battles. A show where we pit similar movies together head-to-head, one-on-one, baby, and see who comes out on top. Today's episode, 1994, the year of Jim Carrey. We're doing a triple threat match. Dumb and Dumber versus Ace Ventura Pet Detective versus The Mask. Buckle up, baby. This is going to be a brutal battle. Let's get into it. Actors often have successful years in Hollywood. For example, Brennan Fraser in the late 90s. He was awesome. But none compared to the historic year of 1994 of Jim Carrey. He exploded and quickly became the highest paid actor in Hollywood when he was just a low-level comedian a couple years before. Ace Ventura Pet Detective released on February 4th, The Mask released on July 29th, and Dumb and Dumber released on December 16th. Wow, what a powerhouse, man. In this fight, we have three rounds. The first round is plot. We're going to analyze the catalyst of the story and see how it flows. The second round is of the players who makes up the stories and who the villains are. And the final bloody round is of audience reception, box office numbers, and legacy. A great way to end the fight. And stay tuned. I even asked some of my creative friends what they think of all three movies. All right, folks, let's get into round one. Starting with Ace Ventura Pet Detective, this was the first of three movies that Jim Carrey starred in in this year. This was the start of a monumental tidal wave that Jim Carrey was about to embark on. The movie starts out with Ace Ventura, an eccentric and unusually hyper private detective in Miami, known for dealing with crimes against animals. He is hired by Melissa, the publicist for the Miami Dolphins. Now, I don't understand baseball, but I can imagine that's a very big deal. He is tasked to find their kidnapped mascot, and he has to hurry because the Super Bowl is happening soon. While on the scene of the kidnapping, inside the tank of the dolphin, he finds a rare stone, which leads him to suspect billionaire Ronald Camp who collects exotic animals, which makes sense. Ventura decides to break into Camp's party and almost gets killed by a shark. Dr. Evil, eat your heart out, man. He rules out Camp because the stone in his ring does match, but it's not missing. So then Ventura theorizes that the stone is from a 1984 championship ring, suggesting it could be a member of the 1994 Dolphin team. One by one, he grabs each of the rings from each of the players, but all of them are intact. So when the Dolphins' head of operations dies mysteriously, Ventura infiltrates the crime scene and proves it's a murder. This revelation leads him to Ray Finkel, who is a disgraced former Dolphins player who biffed a potentially game-winning play of the 1994 Super Bowl game and blamed Dan Marino for it. But uh, I don't really know how soccer works. Come to find out, Finkel was committed to a mental hospital for homicidal tendencies. Then, Dan Marino gets kidnapped, so of course Ventura suspects Finkel seeking his revenge. In one of the funniest scenes in the movie, Ventura disguises himself as a mental patient and discovers that, and I swear to God this is true, Finkel is the cop detective that has been roadblocking Ventura all movie. He finds out that Finkel altered his appearance and infiltrated the police for revenge. The guy is a madman, man! On Super Bowl Sunday, Ventura finally confronts Finkel, disguised as the woman cop, while he is holding Marino and the mascot hostage. In a joke that has not aged well, Ventura exposes Finkel and he is arrested. Wow, what a fucking movie, man. Let's move on to The Mask and see how that one flows. The second Jim Carrey movie this year, The Mask is another absolute banger. And it seems like a kiddish plot, but it's fantastic. Let me explain. In Edge City great name for a city, we meet an insecure bank clerk by the name of Stanley Ipkiss, who is frequently bullied by the people around him. Then we see gangster Dorian Tyrell, who is planning to overtake his boss and take over the gang. Tyrell then sends a smoke show of a girlfriend into the bank to tape the layout, and of course she flirts with Stanley, and he's absolutely loving it. I mean, I would too. I'd probably melt in my chair if she flirted with me. Stanley decides to go watch her dance at a club, but is denied entry. As he's driving his beautiful car home, he breaks down. While having a pity party over the harbor, he thinks he sees someone dead in the water. He jumps in and discovers it's a pile of trash. Within the trash, he finds a weird green mask, so of course he takes it home. Not sure why, but whatever. Back at his apartment, he puts the gross garbage mask on and transforms into the green face suit-wearing trickster known as the Mask. 
creative name. His powers include turning himself into an actual cartoon and literally creating matter and pulling anything he wishes out of his ass. He then goes and gets revenge on the mean landlady and the mechanics who ripped him off. Stanley decides to rob the bank he works at to pay for the tickets to attend Tina's, Dorian's girlfriend, performance at the mob nightclub. He raids the bank, which inadvertently foils Dorian's plan to also rob the bank. God, that was a tongue twister. At the nightclub, he starts dancing with Tina. And they end up kissing. Dorian decides to confront the mask about the bank robbery. And my man gets the heck out of there. During the shootout, a piece of his clothing gets shot off. And it turns back into the original clothes that Stanley was wearing before he turned into the mask. Yeah, I don't know the rules of this universe either, but we're going to move on. The cop Mitch then has to arrest Dorian and his henchmen. But then he finds the piece of clothing from Stanley. And you're probably wondering now how the fuzz knows that this is Stanley's piece of clothing. Well, it's because the cops showed up to Stanley's apartment earlier in the movie and they remember his PJs. I have no clue. So now the cop is on to Stanley. After finding out the mask's origins from a mask expert, like an episode of Pawn Stars, Stanley meets Tina at a local park as the mask. The fuzz shows up and tries to arrest him, but he evades capture by singing Cuban Pete to the officers, best seen in the movie easily. In another twist, the girl that Stanley was with originally, Peggy, turns him into Dorian because Dorian set a bounty on Stanley, or the mask, for $50,000. And I can't even say that I blame Peggy because $50,000 dollars would literally change my life right now so i'm not even putting her down as a bad guy dorian gets the mask and puts it on and becomes an absolute monster stanley ends up getting caught by police and gets put in jail tina is then captured by dorian and taken to the city's charity ball at the nightclub with the city's elite dorian then kills the mob boss and prepares to destroy the nightclub with a time bomb This movie is straight out of a comic book. Then Stanley escapes from jail with the help of his dog. I'm not kidding. Stanley makes it back to the nightclub and Tina convinces Dorian to take off the mask for one last kiss. Nice move on her part. The mask is then recovered and donned by the dog. Again, I'm not kidding. Stanley gets the mask back and puts it back on. And you know what the mask does with the bomb when he gets it? He swallows it. And for a third time, I'm not kidding. And and then, and then the mask flushes Dorian down the drain of the fountain. For a fourth time, I'm not kidding. After this, Stanley is praised as a hero. The following day, Stanley returns to the bridge with Tina and throws the mask back into the harbor. What a fucking unbelievable story. And completely unhinged. I don't even know what to say about that story. Good Lord. Let's move on to the third story, Dumb and Dumber, and see what kind of unhinged shit we can get into. Alrighty, let's go. The third and final Jim Carrey movie that blew away theaters in 1994 was Dumb and Dumber. The movie starts out with Lloyd Christmas and Harry Dunn, two kind but incredibly dumb men. They are BFFs living together in Rhode Island. They are both working jobs to save up to open a pet store. Lloyd, who is a limo driver, takes Mary to the airport and falls in love with her on the way. Kind of quick, but all right. Mary leaves a suitcase in the airport and somehow Lloyd sees this and abandons the limo to chase after Mary to get her suitcase back. Come to find out the suitcase holds ransom money for her kidnapped husband. Of course, Lloyd fails to get her back the suitcase and he takes it home. Harry is a dog groomer who gets all these show dogs completely dirty before a dog show and gets fired. Lloyd also got fired from the whole airport situation. The mobsters that are after the briefcase follow Lloyd home and then they knock on the door and the boys think that they're from the gas company and they flee the apartment because they didn't pay their bill. Lloyd suggests that they go to Aspen, Colorado to find Mary, give the briefcase back and find a better life. A solid plan. The mobsters catch up with the dumb duo at a motel, and posing as a hitchhiker, one of them hitches a ride with Lloyd and Harry. Of course, the duo annoyed the absolute shit out of the mobster during the ride, which is what I could imagine it's like riding with me in a car. They stop for lunch, and they attempt to prank the mobster by putting chili pepper on his food. The mobster eats it and falls back from a bad reaction. He begs for the pills in his jacket. The duo then give the mobster rat poison pills that he had in his jacket that he intended on using on the boys. Of course, this takes out the mobster. The boys flee unknowingly and take a wrong turn and end up driving in the completely wrong direction. A fight ensues and Lloyd attempts to win Harry over by trading the van for a mini bike. I'm not kidding. 
Arriving in Aspen after a freezing cold bike ride, they cannot track down Mary. After running out of money and hope, another fight ensues between the two. And the suitcase gets broken open, and they discover there's a large sum of money inside. Of course, they spend money on a luxury hotel, fancy colorful suits, and supercars. Classic guy moves. The duo learn that Mary is hosting a gala. So when they get there, Harry attempts to play wingman for Lloyd but instead agrees to go on a skiing trip with Mary the next day. The next day, Lloyd waits for Mary all day at the hotel bar and finds out that Harry lied and spent the day with Mary. To get his revenge, Lloyd serves Harry some coffee laced with laxatives before he goes back to Mary's house. And you can see where this is going. Harry absolutely destroys Mary's toilet and breaks it. Best scene in the movie so far. After this whole situation, Lloyd tells Mary that they have her briefcase and he brings her back to the hotel to show her and confesses his love to her. But she informs him that she's married and rejects him. Nicholas, the big guy at the gala, shows up and reveals that he was the mastermind behind the kidnapping of Mary's husband. Of course, he finds out that the dumb duo spent all the money. Furious about this, he takes Lloyd and Mary hostage. Harry returns back to the hotel and ends up saving the day. Apparently, the FBI has been following the boys since the beginning. Next day, the both of them are walking home on foot, and the two unintentionally decline a chance to be oil boys for a group of bikini girls on a bus. And then it eventually fades to black. Wow, another fantastic story. Three fantastic stories, that is. Let's get into the results and see who won round one. Comparing the three is incredibly tough because all three of them have fun, adventurous stories. None of them seem to fall short in the narrative department. Each of them follows one or two guys while they get caught up in a crazy situation and have to figure out how to get out of it with their goals intact. In terms of comedy, each of the three are incredibly funny in their own way. In my humble opinion, I think the weakest of the three is Ace Ventura, which is not to say that it's a bad movie, because it's absolutely amazing. The Mask has great flow and great situations the characters have to go through. But I think overall, the story of Dumb and Dumber takes the cake for me. The story about two dumb guys getting caught up with mobsters and the FBI with a little bit of love sprinkled in really tickles me. Round one winner, Dumb and Dumber, baby. With three titles and three rounds, it's quite possible to go into an overtime round with bonus points involved. But we'll get to that point if we get to it. Let's move on to round two and analyze the players, baby. The second round of this brutal battle is the players, starting with Ace Ventura. Of course, we have Jim Carrey playing Ace Ventura, who literally redefined the definition of an eccentric, funny frontman. I could literally go on and on about how funny Jim Carrey is. We're making a whole video about it, for God's sakes. He played the role perfectly with his goofy, hyper, and out-of-the-world energy. Next, we see the very beautiful Sean Young. As Lieutenant Lois Einhorn, she played the perfect sassy female detective, and I couldn't imagine anyone else performing the role with the ruthlessness required. Next up, we have Friends star Courtney Cox, playing Melissa Robinson, and the football legend Dan Marino himself plays, well, himself. What a solid cast, man. Let's move on. Taking a look at The Mask, Jim Carrey plays Stanley Ipkiss. Any other normal actor would have big time trouble playing the insane, zany, cartoonish character of The Mask. But Jim Carrey did it perfectly. Again, I don't think anybody in Hollywood at the time or even today could pull off what Jim Carrey pulled off. In her film debut role, we see Cameron Diaz, the very beautiful, very perfect woman playing Tina. Playing the ruthless mobster Dorian, we see Peter Green, who also starred in Pulp Fiction, and he plays an amazing bad guy. Playing the main lieutenant, Mitch, we see the very goofy Peter Riger, best known for this movie and Animal House. This role was casted again perfectly. He plays such a great smug jerk-off cop. And finally, Dumb and Dumber. Again, we see Jim Carrey playing Lloyd Christmas. Jim Carrey has played many roles perfectly. Ace Ventura, The Mask, Grinch, Andy Kaufman. But again, this is another one that he was just perfect to play. Jim Carrey plays the dumb, clueless guy flawlessly. Jeff Daniels, who was more of a serious actor, played Harry Dunn. It's been noted that he was worried slash warned not to try to out-comedy Jim Carrey by the people around him, but honestly, he does a fantastic job keeping up with Jim Carrey. We see the very beautiful Lauren Holly as Mary Swanson, who does a great job playing the beautiful independent woman. Playing the main mob guy, we see Mike Starr. With his tall stature and deep New York accent, he plays a great mob guy. 
He also played a part in Goodfellas, which he gets bonus points for that because I love that movie. And we got to mention the cop that pulls the boys over. Harlan Williams, when he drank that bottle of pee, mwah, chef's kiss. Looking at the villains of all three movies, Dorian the mobster, Lieutenant Einhorn the corrupt cop, and Nicholas the kidnapper, the best villain without a shadow of a doubt is Dorian from The Mask. And keeping with The Mask, I think the best leading man of all three movies is Stanley Ipkiss. It's no doubt that the cartoonish and outlandish nature of the Mask character could not be done by anybody else, and Jim Carrey absolutely nailed it. Plus, the amazing supportive characters throughout the movie is what I think brings the mask to the top in round two. One for the mask, one for Dumb and Dumber, and zero for Ace Ventura. Before we continue and get into round three, let's take a break and hear from our sponsors. Hey, folks, I hope you're enjoying this very historic episode of Box Office Battles. Good Lord, what a battle. Can you believe it? Listen, this video is brought to you by Patreon.com slash Official Joey C. For all your exclusive Joey C needs, we have exclusive check-ins, exclusive behind-the-scenes videos, exclusive series reviews, man. Good Lord. Thank you to all my patrons and channel supporters. Greatly appreciate that. If you don't want to go to Patreon.com slash Official Joey C, you can always become a channel member on YouTube. You just hit the little join button next to the subscribe button, which you should also do. And you get all the same perks of Patreon, baby. Good Lord. Is there anything else I have to say? I don't think so. My window's open. My neighbors are looking at me. Hey, Nancy, how are you? Folks. Let's go back to box office battles. All righty. It's actually, it's in here. I'm, I'm editing it right now. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to editing it. Okay, see you later. Bye. Hey, wait a second. You look good today. All right, see you later. <laughs> Going into the third and final bloody round of this wonderful fight, can Ace Ventura come out on top and tie this thing up and send us into overtime? I don't know. Let's take a look at audience reception, box office numbers, and legacy. Let's go. Let's start with the first of three Jim Carrey films to drop this year, Ace Ventura Pet Detective. The movie pulled in an impressive $107 million at the box office on a $15 million budget. Not too bad. It's wild to find out that when this movie initially came out, it got a bunch of negative reviews. But looking back now, it's regarded as a classic 90s movie. Hang on, hang on. Am I reading this correctly? Looking at the Rotten Tomato score, I am appalled at what I see. I see a 47% on the tomato meter. What the hell? And a 57% on an audience score? What the fuck, man? I thought this movie was a classic. That's kind of surprising considering how many good things I hear about this movie from social media. Moving on to The Mask, the second Jim Carrey movie to drop this year, this movie destroyed at the box office, making $352 million on a $23 million budget, which is absolutely wild. It was the second highest superhero movie of all time behind Batman. It did become the most profitable comic book movie of all time until 2019 when Joker came out. And according to my paperwork, the Rotten Tomato score, it has an 80% fresh on the tomato meter, which is pretty good, and a 68% audience score. It's much better than Ace Ventura, but it's still not as high as I would like to see it. And finally, Dumb and Dumber, the third and final Jim Carrey movie to drop this year. And once again, it killed it at the box office. It made $248 million on a $17 million budget, a crazy successful film. It hit number one on opening weekend and made $17 million in that weekend alone. I'm shocked at these Rotten Tomato numbers. This movie has a 68% on the tomato meter, which is shockingly low, but it does have an 84% audience score, which is the highest of the three movies. All right, before we get into the final results of this bloody battle, I asked a few of my creator friends what they think of all three movies. All right, Joey C, roll the tape, baby. Let's hear it. Having to pick out a winner between Ace Ventura and Dumb and Dumber is like fighting over which kid I like more. Uh, not an impossible task for sure. I, I actually, it'd be very easy for me to figure that out. Yeah, we'll leave in a minute. Um, I got to do a thing for Joey C. The great thing about these three movies is they're three sig significantly different uh, comedic roles for Carrie. It's not him doing the same thing in all three movies. He is doing different things in each one. The winner for me is Dumb and Dumber. 
And I think the reason is more than twofold, I think it's manyfold. First off, it's the most quotable movie possibly in the world. Big gulps, huh? All right, see you later. Those skis yours? Both of them? Uh, I need to talk about Ace Ventura, Dumb and Dumber, and The Mask for one of his stupid videos. You know, The Mask, straight man, but also when he turns into The Mask, he brings out the true Jim Carrey. I just thought he was quiet. You want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? <laughs> Swanson, Slappy, Samsonite. I was way off. Uh, he's paying me, right? Right, he paid me, right? Can you check? Then we have Ace Ventura, which is just him being legitimately goofy the whole time. It goes on and on and on. And yes, of course, Ace Ventura's got quotable lines. Do not go in there. But it's not near as rapid fire as Dumb and Dumber provides. Oh, I didn't get paid to be in this. And I think Dumb and Dumber you could probably put in the same category, but it's a completely different kind of goofiness that uh, Carrie brings to the table. Oh, well then the hell with Joey. See, I'm not, I'm not doing this. Now let's talk about cast. Ace Ventura almost solely rests upon the shoulders of Jim Carrey, which not really that hard of a deal, right? Jim Carrey can easily carry a film by himself. And for me, I think what takes the cake is Dumb and Dumber and his relationship and his kind of camaraderie with Jeff Daniels. But Dumb and Dumber gives us multiple performances. They're fantastic. Carrey is accompanied by Jeff Daniels, who is managing to keep up with the guy at almost every turn. Who is also at such a comedic high in that movie, where I think that is what gives Dumb and Dumber the edge as my personal favorite of the three movies that came out that year, because for me, Ace Ventura, When Nature Calls, is I think the better Ace Ventura movie. The more I think about it, the more I talk about it, the easier the pick actually is for me. Dumb and Dumber is not only the best Jim Carrey movie, it's the funniest comedy for me, full stop. And The Mask is, is a lot of fun, but I think Dumb and Dumber, along with, you know, with Carrie and Daniels together and just everything that goes on in that movie, Dumb and Dumber takes the cake as the best film of the trilogy, the Carrie trilogy of 1994. There you have it. Dumb and Dumber takes the win. Thanks, Joey C. Comparing all three of these, it's clear that the lasting legacy of all three movies have on pop culture is unmeasurable. The amount of quotables in each film is unreal. You hear them all the time. But I think the winner of the first ever triple threat box office battles is... Drum roll, please. The Mask. Dumb and Dumber pulled ahead in the plot round. The Mask quickly took its victory in the players round. And then The Mask pulled through again to its victory when discussing its legacy and box office performance. It's no secret that all movies are forces to be reckoned with in the comedy world. So it's incredibly hard to pick one that comes out on top. I wonder what Jim Carrey would think of these results. Let's ask him. Roll the tape, Joe. I'm just kidding. We don't have that kind of poll, dude. We don't even have 3,000 subscribers. Consider subscribing to my channel. I'd greatly appreciate it. What do you think of this battle? What movies do you want to see me pit together next? Let me know in the comments below. Join my Discord. Head on over to patreon.com slash officialjoeyc, like I said before. And folks, thanks for watching this historic battle of box office battles. I greatly appreciate it. Keep your eye out for the next video, episode, movie. Head on over to twitch.tv slash officialjoeyc. And with that, I leave you with one more thing. Cherish the precious moments, be love, and stay dude. I'm out of here. Good Lord. I got some food in the oven and I'm hungry. I'm going to go eat it, baby. Dino chicken nuggets, here I come.